from holodex to hollow knight nerds like a lot of things but there's something they love above all else and that is correcting people this is um actually joining us today we have caldwell tanner hi we have Jess Ross. Hello. And a very special fan guest all the way from Chicagoland, it's Alyssa Rusinellis. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Really great to have you out here. That's right, we're doing these very special fan episodes where fans like you can play with us. Uh, if you didn't know about this, you gotta get on the Discord. We've been beating this drum. I don't know what to tell you, but pay <laughs> attention. Uh, that's right, it's your fault. Uh, <laughs> it's always your fault here on Um Actually. Well. You all know how to play. Uh, if you uh, at home are watching this for the first time, this is a stack of statements. These are false statements, but the things you know and love. It's up to our contestants to find the thing that's wrong and correct me. All your corrections must be perceived by the phrase, um, actually, don't, I won't give you the point unless I forget that that's the one rule of this game and then I accidentally <laughs> give you a point and then have to double back on myself. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> secondly, you can interrupt me whenever you want. As soon as you hear what's wrong, bu buzz in, tell me what's wrong, that's it. How's everyone feeling? A little nerves, a little confidence? I'm feeling extremely nervous. <laughs> oh. I don't know what to feel. Uh, yeah, great. <laughs> uh, uh, from uh, nihilism to nervous, we've got it all. <laughs> what uh, a spectrum. Our first question uh, is about Star Wars. Oh, right! <laughs> <laughs> Droid is a catch-all term for an extremely diverse array of sentient robots, ranging from the small and boxy MSE-6 mouse droid to the humanoid E-3PO. Originating with the ancient Rakatan Empire, droids are older than the Jedi Order itself. Yes, Alyssa? Um, actually, it's C-3PO. Now, uh, we did this just to be mean. C-3PO is a real droid, but there is also an E-3PO Ooh, droid. Knew it. Uh, just to kind of try to throw you off. Uh, yes, E-3PO is a real droid. Why would you do that? Uh, she came all the way from Chicago. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not gonna stop me from being tricky. <laughs> You're a little imp, you know? <laughs> The Renaissance era. <laughs> <laughs> not the uh, the era that you mentioned. Not not quite so long, long time ago. It's Renaissance era. No, no. Excuse me. Yes, yes, Caldwell. In. Caldwell, yes. Um, actually, I believe that 3PO classifies himself as a cyborg when he says human cyborg relations. That's interesting. He mm -hmm. does say that, but he's not a cyborg. He's not a cyborg at all. Is C3, unless, does he oh, does have he have a heart? Unless, oh my God, does he have a human brain in there? Did we <laughs> blow shit. this whole thing open? <laughs> it's Anakin's Star Wars brother. Star celebration is in two weeks, guys. Oh my God, we have to alert the press. C3PO has a human mind. Oh, Let him free. He's trapped. Um, no. Uh, I'm gonna say no one got this. Uh, yeah, that's a unless, you know, unless you know, Star Wars is hiding something from us about C3PO's origins. <laughs> um, Droids didn't origi originate in the Rakatan Empire. They're actually from even before the Rakatan Empire. Get out. Uh, so they are, uh, they are um, perhaps older than 25,000 years old within the, uh, the Star Wars universe, which means droids have just been kicking around forever. Like these like almost immortal, like ancient <laughs> technology. It's like, it's like the wheel, fire, artificial <laughs> intelligence stomping around <laughs> that have seen robots. like everything, yeah. They're like computer vampires. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, so you, have, you have read the original yeah. Bible, the George Yeah, the well no, it was an Anne Rice book. <laughs> yeah, an interview with a droid. <laughs> <laughs> it really puts R2-D2's little beeps into a new context. Yeah. Just like crying out, like yeah. trying to get people to acknowledge. <laughs> oh, just doesn't like this at all. I, I, uh, <laughs> I feel pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why they don't like subtitle it at all. It's just like uh, most of the stuff he's saying is a real <laughs> downer. Uh, well, that is uh, no point for anyone on that one, cool, but gosh, right. did we have fun. Uh, and we go to our next question. It's about Disney's Aladdin. <gasps> Genie, whose true name is never revealed, is the only character in Aladdin animated with four fingers instead of five. A stylistic choice to make Genie feel more cartoonish and otherworldly. That's a fun fact. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Jess. I don't think Genie's the only one with four fingers. Uh, what about a poo? <laughs> <laughs> How many fingers does he have? The lovable ape. Uh, I don't think Apu has four. That's not what we're going for, but I didn't count Apu's fingers, to be fair. So we'll get our fact checker to make sure <laughs> that I didn't mistake this. How many fingers does Apu Finger have? Check. But you, you have hit on the right thing, which is that uh, that he's not the only character with four fingers. Um, but So I'll give you the okay. point unless someone else can tell me who the character is. Alyssa? Um, actually, Jafar only has four fingers. No. No? Uh, called one. Um, actually, if you count the thumb, he has five fingers. <laughs> yeah, I'm not counting my thumb. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. Yeah, I mean, true to the spirit of the show, but not what we're going for. Um, hmm. Do we have any? Uh, are we, 
So it, she's red actually in the thumb of her thing. Holy oh! shit! <laughs> oh yeah! Bravo! Uh, great. Take my well, buzzer. Uh, just take thank it. Thank you. Okay. Did thank you. you. Oh fuck me! I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, the carpet has no fingers. Oh, shit. Wait, oh if you count the, what if you count the tassels, though? That's several little fingers. Uh, Think about it. Gosh, uh, well, I'm, I, now i got to figure out what to do here. <laughs> Alyssa you were said correct. I'm actually. You didn't say I'm actually. You said I'm actually, and you also said something that's technically correct, although carpet doesn't have hands. <laughs> Dude, well, well, if you look at the fan art I did of the carpet as a human, oh. yeah, a lot of fingers. Well, i got to figure out what's the most fair here. I guess we should battle it out. I guess we should battle it out. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm going to give it to Alyssa because that is technically true. And you didn't say uh, I'm actually Jess, which is the one rule. And I have to, I can't. I'm a bit of a rebel. I you can't know? let that slide. Yeah. Um, uh, Diamond so in we'll the rough. That, uh, so we'll give a point for Alyssa. That wasn't what I was going for. Uh, the other humanoid, human ish character who has four fingers is the uh, merchant at the opening uh, <gasps> of, that of the thing. Is? Because that oh. is, oh. In, in an old, an older version, that was going to be revealed to be Genie sort of in disguise. Although that scene was later cut. That's good. Um, but uh, so, at least in the version we see, there are two figures, the genie and the merchant at the opening and closing mm. it. All right, we'll move on to our next question. Cool. Uh, this is about Full Metal Alchemist. <sighs> the Elric brothers are both immensely talented alchemists. Edward, a state alchemist for the military, can perform alchemy without an alchemical transmutation circle. Alphonse has his own claim to fame, though. He lacks a physical body and instead is a soul bonded to a suit of metal armor, earning him the nickname Full Metal. Um, actually, <laughs> Fuhrer King Bradley gave Edward Elric the title Full Metal Alchemist due to his auto male arm and leg. Uh, yes, fine. You, you're, you're so, <laughs> I, I was waiting for even more because you were so exasperated by what I had said. I, I self-regulated myself. I could have gone on. <laughs> yeah. Do I mean, you want to go on? I mean, do we want to talk about Brotherhood or the original animated series or perhaps the OVA movie? I mean, it's up to us, you know? What do we want to do? Well, yeah, this is kind of a gimme if you're familiar with the series, because this is something they even point out within the series itself that the character who is, in fact, a full metal mm -hmm. suit of armor is not the one who is called the full yeah. metal alchemist. Some really advanced humor on display in the series. They, they joke about that and then the fact that Edward is short. Look, you, you take comedy where you can, <laughs> exactly. I guess, you know? Uh, great, well, we'll go on. We're gonna move on to, uh, this is um, a new thing we're doing with them, actually. This is a fan submitted question. Cool. Uh, so this is from, uh, from one of you out there. In fact, this is from Baron Coop, or perhaps Baron Co-op. I'm not sure where it is. There's no hyphen. I, either seems possible. Um, so, but here's a question from Baron Coop. This is about Wreck-It Ralph. Ralph may come from the fictional video game Fix-It Felix, but his support group, Bad Anon, is populated with villains, yes, Caldwell what? <laughs> Um, actually, it's Fix It Felix Jr. That's correct. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is it your victory? Your, That's my little victory your, dance. Your victory dance. Well, I couldn't even finish the question, but that is part of it. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought that might have been a dance was, from I the movie. I was about to jump in with the same yeah. thing. <laughs> That's why I feel bad. I feel like, you know, you're you're a guest here. I should be giving you more of a yeah. fair shake. Yeah, what are you doing? I when mean, you... you have to defend your job. Yes, yeah. true. Because otherwise I, I will steal it. It's true. I lose my job. All jobs uh, if, if I lose here today. We're going to move on to our, um, uh, our first shiny question of the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a game that I maybe thought um, I shouldn't do, because I think you've done it every time you've come on. This is a game called Fictionary. Uh, but I decided I wanted to because Alyssa is also a, a, an artist, uh, animator in training, so it felt very appropriate that we should play this game. So the way this works is I'm gonna give you the name of a creature from folklore or uh, myth or something, and it'll be up to you to draw that creature to the best of your ability. I won't be judging uh, the quality of the drawing. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I'll be judging, looking more for like things that are like key components of this. Uh, if you get enough of them, you get close enough. I'll give I've you already a drawn a Wendigo. Okay, well, you're way behind then, because okay. that's not what I'm about to say. Fair enough. Uh, your creature is Zeratan. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Jess is giggling to herself. She's gonna draw something inappropriate. <laughs> oh, the anatomy is lovely. Oh, yeah. thank mm. you. Uh, Alyssa's locking in the oh. drawing. I just have to draw the udder. 
Oh, wait, I almost heard that. The udder. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I um, forgot my udders, too, so I better get back in here. You almost forgot here. the udder. <laughs> OK. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at these lovely drawings. Caldwell, we'll start with you, and we'll okay. work our way down the line. OK, so um, I beware, viewer, for this sight might shock you. Behold, the Zerutan. <laughs> Tell us about the Zerutan. OK, so the Zerutan. Um, Classical, classical creep. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to, obviously, uh, you know, sneaks into your cupboard, mm -hmm. uh, steals all your powders, yeah, so that they can produce milk from their udder. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> they love to steal, like if you get like a cocoa, they'll make like a cocoa with that. Uh, it just comes right out there. Okay, and this mm -hmm. seems to be a crab uh, giving me flipping the bird with a, with a cat <laughs> face yeah, and, yeah, a, yeah. and an udder. Well, that's when it gets caught. It goes like. Ah! <laughs> Give me your powder! All right, well, mm -hmm. this is pretty far, although there is maybe one element that I could <gasps> count, but I don't think I'm going to. Well, let's see, let's see how everyone else does. Okay. Jess, let's, yeah, let's see okay, what you got. Yeah, okay, so this is Zaratan. Can we, can we, yeah. <laughs> <He's>, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so we all know him from, um, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do we know Wait. him from, Jess? From Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> He's a robot who likes to go to the beach. Is he trying to get a tan? <laughs> he is, but that's kind of the thing. Almost mm. going back to the C-3PO mm. stuff, he can't because he's oh, a robot. No. That's tragic. Uh, so he goes to the beach every day and tries to get a tan. He has little abs, and this is to um, get different TV shows. <laughs> <laughs> That seems pretty good. And the sun is his uh, enemy in this world, as we all know. Did he draw the abs on himself? Uh, no, his creator did. That's All right. Beautiful. Well, this is pretty far. Uh, pretty far from being wrong. Pretty far from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what um, I. Actually. That, that's what I mean when I say pretty far. Uh, but uh, let's let's take a look at what Alyssa um, has here. Okay. So, here we have uh, from the Renaissance era. It secretes paint from its udders okay. and uses its tail to create works of art. <laughs> um, also, it just has big stupid eyes. And so it's like a smeargle situation. Yes, very uh, much. Uh, yeah, I want to see. Oh! 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 Whoa! That looks like something you'd see like on the side of a building in the 70s. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like, oh, Zeratan was here. But in the 1470s, not the <laughs> 1970s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so the sorry. Renaissance. It's from the Renaissance. The era. Renaissance. Era. Is, if you look closely at the at the top of the Sistine Chapel, actually, this is there. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> well, these are all pretty far from the correct answer. But um, why don't we go ahead and take a look at what it should look like mm. before we make any judgments okay. here. Here's Zeratan. Oh. Oh. Uh, it's like Torterra. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yes, yeah. yeah. The, the key feature I'm looking for is uh, this is, uh, is like a city or a full ecosystem on the back of what is usually a turtle, sometimes, mm. sometimes called, well, a crab, uh, <laughs> but usually a turtle. Um, and water. And and mm. and water. Sure, you you've got the beach element. You've got the occasional crab element. Um, I can't confirm that that uh, doesn't have four toes, so uh, four fingers. So that could be right. Some elements swirling around things, but I think we're missing the most important two features here, which is mm -hmm. turtle and uh, cityscape ecosystem. Yeah. Sure. So unfortunately, no points for that one. But three. Beautiful drawings. Thank Caldwell, you. do you have something to say? Uh, where did you get this picture? It's just funny that it's a, a land It's from the turtle. inside of my locker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some flat earthers, that's what they believe, that we are on the mm -hmm. back of a giant turtle. That's yeah. who I thought you were going to say this was. Wait, you thought that this was a flat earther? I thought that that was, the fl that that was our planet. Oh, Two it is our planet. <laughs> that's our planet. <laughs> to, yeah, to me, Jess, you got to stop believing everything the media tells you. This, yeah. is our, this is our world. This is what we live on. Right. Don't let the media lie to you. We're on a turtle. <laughs> Hey, we heard you loud and clear. We made some mistakes in our past episode, and you caught them. Here are some of our favorite corrections from you, the viewers. At Diacritic says, I'm um, actually two of the Cornetto movies are not supernatural. The World's End from the Cornetto trilogy is science fiction. I take issue with this very narrow definition of supernatural, but very narrow definitions are what the show is all about. At Music Have 2014 had a number of corrections about our discussion surrounding Legend of Zelda, including that there were no Gerudo. However, are we counting Ganon? I think we should, and therefore, no points for you. And from our exclusive Dropout Discord, and Tess says, um, actually, there are nine dungeons in the original Legend of Zelda. Eagle, Moon, Manji, Snake, Lizard, Dragon, Demon, Lion, and Death Mountain. That point should have gone to Jess, and I didn't give it to her. Sorry for that, Jess. Your point will instead go to Antes. 
Get your buzzer, get your buzzers. And we're back in I'm Actually mode. The movie World War Z was based on the book of the same title, which was written by Max Brooks, child of Anne Bancroft and Mel Brooks. It made its mark on zombie cinema by introducing the concept of fast-moving zombies, rather than sticking to the traditional shambling and clumsy undead fans were accustomed to. Um, actually, I don't think that's the first time we've seen fast-moving zombies. That's correct. Mm. Woo! Oh, do, you know, do you know the first time we've seen Fast Moving Zombies? Dawn of the Dead? No. One of the, oh, fuck. I'm, not, still gi I'm still gonna give you the point. I'm just. It's not Night of the Living Dead. They were slow as fuck. <laughs> it was, uh, who's moving fast? It's, it was like. 28 Days Later? 28, no, mate. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it is 28 Days Later. I am, however, still gonna give it to yeah, Jess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, really? But yeah, 28 mm -hmm. Days, that's, that is the, uh, the first time we saw Fast Zombies, which is, wow, what a revolution in, yeah. in zombie technology. Um, right. actually, I think Jess did a great job. <gasps> I didn't say she did a bad job. Um, actually, thank you. <laughs> Wait a minute, I don't like this disparagement. <laughs> um, actually, you're welcome. Uh, scarier, fast moving zombies, slow moving zombies. Fast. Fast, yeah, I'm slow, fast, fast. Yeah. fast. They'll eat me alive. Look, yeah, fast is more of a threat for sure, but there's, yeah. there's maybe something, there's something about the like shambling determinedness yeah. of just like, it's just gonna keep coming, you know, in like an it follows kind of way. Yeah, but yeah. I feel like if yeah. I'm in the real zombie situation, I'm yeah. not gonna be like, oh, look at all this dramatic tension that's yeah. slowly building. <laughs> this sucks! <laughs> Although when they catch up to you, that is scary. It feels like more of an insult if a slow zombie catches you. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like the slow zombies seem more fragile for some reason. Like, mm. you could just take them out, yeah. but you don't want to go close. But yeah. it's a false sense of confidence. Yeah, they lure you in by setting by setting <laughs> expectations mm -hmm. real low. Like, oh, ne <laughs> I'll never bite you. Who, me? Just a slow zombie? I don't need that, that zombie's shoes are untied. I don't need to worry about him. <laughs> well, that's a point for Jess uh, yeah. for correctly identifying these fast zombies. Thank you. Yeah. Well, our next question is about wrestling. Uh, oh, it's, it's always fun to, to say a topic and see what the reaction is. <laughs> in 1990, a wrestler named Stone Cold Steve Austin signed with WCW and would win his first WCW World Television Championship within a year. Years later, in an effort to mock proselytizing opponent Jake Roberts, he unveiled his famous catchphrase, Austin 316, which says, I just whooped your ass. Jess. I mean, he wasn't Stone Cold when he was with WCW. He was with WWE. Jess, you, you need to answer in the form of an um, actually. Oh, <laughs> I thought we were just talking. I thought we were just having a conversation God, here. Damn. <laughs> I'm not saying whether you're right or wrong. I'm just saying you have to answer, answer in the form of an um, actually. Um, actually. It was not the WCW, it was the WWE. Uh, incorrect. With Jake the Snake? Look. I'm going to level with you here. I'm absolutely going to need fact checking on this because I have no idea the words that I'm saying, but it is not the correction I have here. We're not saying the Jake the Snake battle was with WCW. Mm. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, actually, his catchphrase was, can you smell what Stone Cold Steve Austin <laughs> is uh, drinking? Wildly incorrect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, it wasn't in 1990. Uh, no. <laughs> Well, I, I'm gonna say that uh, that we've stumped. I feel I feel bad for you. You 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 look like you're getting a little angry. Um, I don't know what it is, uh, and I am getting angry. <laughs> um, so uh, the answer here, uh, Austin uh, was originally, and at this point, originally uh, stunning Steve oh, Austin. Oh come <laughs> on! I said, oh god damn! <laughs> She's gonna whoop your ass. I did say he wasn't Stone Cold. You in did. WCW. You did before. Yeah, when you when you you said that where you didn't say him actually, and then when you actually said him actually, you didn't say the part that was right. Oh, uh, no. That was the correction. Damn. I'm so sorry, Jess. You look so upset. You look stunned. <laughs> I am stunned. Well, you'll have a chance to redeem yourself with this next question about movies. Guys, we're gonna talk about Bright Cellars today. Bright Cellars is the service that helps you find wine that you love while making wine more accessible to everyone. No matter how much you know about wine, Bright Cellars can help you find a bottle that you love. Maybe you're brand new, you know nothing about wine, you wander the shelves, feeling confused, end up just picking the second cheapest bottle or the one with the like the cute bunny on it or something. That's fine. Bright Cellars will help you find wines that you love. Maybe you're a connoisseur, you know everything about wine, you're a real fucking asshole. That's cool too! You can find your new favorite bottle with Bright Cellars. Here's how it works. 
Bright Cellars will pair you, your specific tastes, to unique wines using their crazy accurate algorithm. All you do, you take one quick 30 second quiz and then they'll tell you six wines that they think you're gonna love. And if you're still like, Trap, it doesn't matter. I'm drinking this wine. I don't know anything about what I'm drinking. I'm picking up notes of alcohol and grapes. That's fine. That's totally fine. They'll send you education cards so you know everything about the wine you're drinking, the tasting notes, the proper serving temperature, what food it pairs well with. You'll be a wine expert by the end of this. You're gonna be a goddamn sommelier by the time this is done. And if you think, I don't know, Trap, an algorithm? Don't those fuck things up all the time? Maybe you don't like this bottle you got. That's totally cool. Bright Sellers will work with you to send you a replacement bottle in your next order. For Um Actually listeners, you can get 50% off your first six bottle order from Bright Sellers. That's right, half off your first six bottle order from Bright Sellers. Just go to brightsellers.com slash actually. That's Bright Sellers, B-R-I-G-H-T-C-E-L-L-A-R-S, you know, like a wine seller. Brightsellers.com slash actually. Get 50% off your first six bottle order. Travel around the world in a wine glass. Explore the world of wine, because you're not going anywhere else with Bright Sellers. Steven Spielberg's original Night Skies concept was about a family dealing with a hostile alien invasion and a little boy befriending one of the aliens. It ended up leading to the release of two separate hit films in 1982, the family-friendly PG-rated E.T. and the nightmare-fueling PG-13 Poltergeist. Uh, um, actually, it was Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Incorrect. Wow. But that, that would, would, make, sense. would make sense. Yeah, that would make sense. I was thinking that, too. That's why yeah. I said it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we all agree, you're wrong. It was, it was Ghost Encounters of the Third Kind. Um, actually, Poltergeist isn't that scary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, uh, I want to say no, but you're too tough. Um, actually, E.T. is terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Uh, no, I'm not going to count either of those. No! Mm -mm -mm. Um, actually, it wasn't Night Skies. Uh, it was Night Skies. Um, actually, it wasn't 1982. It was 1982. Ooh. We're, um, we're going to run it out of... wasn't Steven Spielberg. <laughs> it was Steven Spielberg. <laughs> um, actually, his name is Stunning Steven Spielberg. <laughs> actually, by this point, he was Stone Cold Steve Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> this is when Steve Spielberg was in the WWE. Yeah. Yeah, he would drink six beers. Yeah, at it's Indy saying, I just whipped your ass. <laughs> I remember that vest he had. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I'm gonna say you all got plenty of chances to guess, mm. and I'm gonna say no one, no one got this one. Um, the correct thing here is Poltergeist is rated PG. Um, oh, that's right. it was 1984, wasn't it? The, the year is correct. Um, the Poltergeist was going to be rated R, uh, but Steven Spielberg lobbied hard to get that the rating lowered. And at that point in time, the rating PG-13 didn't exist. Oh. So both ET and Poltergeist are both rated PG, oh. um, is which it? is nuts. Yeah, <laughs> it's like Wrong. a couple years later that they implemented the PG-13. Yeah, mm -hmm. isn't there debate if he directed it or not that it was during like a direct Directors, some type of strike. And I think then... that's the Exorcist. Am I, am I, am I, am I, am no, I think it's Poltergeist. Some people believe Spielberg was a shadow director. Mm. Yeah, no. and it feels it too when you watch that movie. Mm. Yeah, let's say you were right. It was 1984 that PG. Oh, I feel like that's half a point right there. Half a point. I, I don't point. have the ability to award half a point. Give her half a point. Half oh. a point. What do you want me to do? We can't change the th thing. Here, I got a pin right here. Just add a point five. <laughs> we, just, we permanently <laughs> add a half point to this podium. It's like, look, if you're in this podium, you got to have better you chance of winning. You got a Fraction. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll put you over the edge. All right, this is a brand new game that we're going to play. This is called Tag Out. Uh, so on the other side of this board, there's going to be uh, movie posters with the um, taglines removed and sort of put to the side. Wow. So it'll be up to you to put the taglines uh, onto the correct movie poster. <laughs> um, uh, pretty simple. Uh, whoever gets the most right will get the point. If there's a tie, you'll both get a point. Just real quick, I'm going to go ahead and put my glasses on for this one. <gasps> okay. And I think it's worth noting that those are your real glasses that are <laughs> actually taped, right? These are my real glasses. I broke them two days ago. This, uh, this is not a prop in order to seem more nerdy. <laughs> this is actually what this is what your glasses look this like. This is right real now. life. I would I would not lead you astray. This actually happened to me, and I'm living in my truth in this moment. Let's match some taglines. Let's tag do lines. it. Match some taglines. Let's take a look <laughs> yeah. here. These are the Harry Potter movies. Mm. Look at those. So there's a lot of them, uh, more than we would normally put in here, but we wanted to include all the Harry Potter movies. And you'll notice some of those taglines, well, they're awfully similar. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh-oh. Something evil returned, probably the first one then. <laughs> <laughs> Cedric Diggory dies, I know where that one goes. <laughs> Dumbledore is um, gay. That wasn't in any of the books yeah. or the movies. That's fantastic, <laughs> Beast. Yeah. Hardly. Yeah. Dark secrets revealed. Uh, let's take a look at what you got. All right, I think this is the correct order. Um, we got Journey Beyond Your Imagination. <laughs> Something evil has returned to Hogwarts. Something wicked this way comes. Dark secrets revealed. Make a final stand. Everything is about to change. It all ends. It all ends here. Okay. And then uh, just a little addendum. Oh, that's that's uh, that's a lovely little uh, fuck it's you. It's the Fantastic trap. Beasts tagline. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jess, tell us what you got here. Okay, journey beyond your imagination. Something evil has returned to Hogwarts. Something wicked this way comes. Everything is about to change. Make a final stand. Dark secrets revealed. It all ends. It all ends. Here. All right, oh. and then Alyssa, what do you have? I'm Definitely. pretty sure I have the exact same <gasps> thing as you. Ah. All right, hmm. so Jess and Alyssa, you got very close to getting all of these right. Uh, you are, were, of course, uh, uh, tripped up by the end. Mm. Uh, the uh, Deathly Hells Part 1 is It All Ends Here, Wait. and then It All Ends. Why are your movies in different orders? Then? What? They are? Wait, what? what? You have Part 2, then. Oh. Um, actually, oh, okay. um, actually, wait, am I right by accident? Are you right, by, right ac by accident? <laughs> I'm actually right by accident. Well, I guess, I guess, I, I shouldn't have pointed it I out. I guess we should remove a point from one of the PAs, and we should, uh, <laughs> and Jess, you're right by accident. I guess you, you accidentally got all of them right yeah. uh, due to a mix-up on our part. Um, I think Alyssa which is very should noble share of you, the Alyssa. point with me. Okay. Because she noticed it. That's true. She That's didn't true. Get two points. Also, you would have, I think, been tied for the most. Because I think Colo, you missed more than uh, more than two of them. Although yep. I may have lost track of, of one of them there. Oh yeah, I goofed up big time. Yeah. I uh, I think I, I think Goblet of Fire threw me, and it all fell apart after that. Yeah. 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 Yep. Well. Uh, you know what? Let's let's say let's share the point. Let's share the point on this one. Yeah. Um, it feels better to, to share this point than it does to, to just give so it to you. I think so too. It feels dirty to, so, to <laughs> so, greedily take it all to myself. Uh, a, a point for both Jess and Alyssa for that one. Yay! Well done. Well done. Yay! Actually, that was whack. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you think these are the only people who can correct me? No, you can too. If you notice something that I got wrong, you can correct me by tweeting at I'm Actually Show or by going to the Dropout Discord and correcting me there. If we like it, we might even feature it on the show and give you a point. Let's move right along here. This is about Stranger Things. After finding a bizarre creature in a trash can, Dustin adopts it as a pet, naming it D'Artagnan from the character from his favorite novel, or Dart for short. It is only later that Dustin realizes Dart is a young demogorgon and thus incredibly dangerous. Um, actually, he names him Bartholomew and calls him Bart for short. <laughs> <laughs> My demogorgon is also named Bart. Uh, no, incorrect. Alyssa, yeah. Um, actually, it's not from his favorite novel. Uh, that's correct. Can you say Wasn't what? it from D&D? Uh, well, the Demogorgon names comes from D&D. Uh, I'll go ahead, I'll, I'll give it to you. Yeah. you. You found what's wrong nice. there. Nice. Uh, it's not, uh, uh, the name D'Artagnan uh, is from Three Musketeers, but it's not from the book okay. Three Musketeers. He names it after the candy bar Three Musketeers Aww. because uh, that's what that's what, that's the what little, he was eating. That's what little young Demogorgon likes to eat. Um, wouldn't it be nice if we were yeah. all named after the things we like to what eat? A, what a cute little technicality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a tiny little, tiny little technicality. Oh, my name's funny. processed food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right, here's a video game question for you. Sounds play a big role in Overwatch strategy. For instance, D.Va announces her ultimate ability by shouting activating self-destruct sequence so her teammates can coordinate their attacks accordingly, while the opposing team hears her yell, nerf this, giving them a heads up to try to escape the incoming explosion. Attentive players can even distinguish the footsteps of different heroes as they approach, since every hero has been designed with a unique footstep sound effect. Yes, Alyssa? Um, actually, Zenyatta doesn't have footsteps because he levitates. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Zenyatta main. Uh-oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> Coming in fast. Oh, that's great. Uh, uh, yeah, that's totally correct, mm -hmm. Zenyatta doesn't have footsteps. You gotta give it up for a Duncan like that. Yeah. That's not your point. That's just a solid slam. Oh, yeah. That's very fun attention to detail, and it's also the kind of thing that, like, 
um, uh, I'm not like a like a strong or attentive enough player to be like I'm gonna be listening for the sounds of everything yeah. and keep a track of this. <laughs> I I play a couple first person shooter games and this is the only one that I have to put headphones in when I play because oh. you can it really can change the course of a game. Wow. Do you get real intense? Are you like screaming you, at the screen? Yeah, I turn into like a 12 year old boy from like <laughs> one of those YouTube cringe compilations and it's really disgusting. Oh, no. <laughs> Do either of you play Overwatch? Yes, uh, and another fun fact is that the other team is red while your team is blue. And that's how <laughs> oh, I a little known them. fact for some. That's how I tell them apart. It's not my favorite. It's a bit too much going on <laughs> in the game. I instantly die every time. Yeah, yeah. I'm deep in a Mario party right now. I play by myself with three computers. <laughs> I, I play Mario Party DS. Who's your so Mario shit. Party go to? Luigi. Oh, mm -hmm. nice dice. <laughs> 11567. <laughs> um, well, that's a point for Alyssa. Um, this will bring us to our last shiny question of the game. Uh, this is a game called Spelling Bee. Spelling in English is hard enough. Spelling in sci-fi and fantasy is damn near impossible. There's apostrophes, there's umlauts, there's weird letters you've never seen before. Um, so I'm gonna give you uh, a name of something from sci-fi or fantasy. Um, first person who can spell it correctly will get the point. Your word is Daenerys Targaryen. <laughs> that doesn't seem too hard. <laughs> I'm Jess actually, going. <laughs> let's do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. D A E N Y E R E S. Um, oh, and oh, and I gotta do Targaryen. The last name. Oh, oh, God. Space. <laughs> 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 Capital T A R Tar. Gare, A, R. Wait, A, G, A, R. No, wait, here. She said e. it. Uh, I'm actually doing <laughs> capitalize the first letter in the first. Targaryen. And. <laughs> uh, incorrect. Uh, M, O, T, H, E, R, space, O, F, space, T, R, A, G, O, N, S. B-R-E-A-K-E-R-O-F-C-H-A-I-S. Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry to say that was incorrect. Uh, incorrect, Jess. But yeah, harder than it seems. Uh, Anyone else want to take a stab at Daenerys yeah. Targaryen? Go for it or? <sighs> Jump in there. The yeah, I'm going to go with go uh, all my zero knowledge okay. of uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, D-A-N-A-E-R-Y-S space T A R G A R. Y A N? Uh, incorrect, although pretty close. May I take a stab at it? You may take a stab at okay. it. Okay. Uh, D A E mm. N E R Y S T A E R G A R I A N. Incorrect. Oh. Um, uh, you did get Daenerys correct. Uh, however, you did not get the spelling of Targaryen correct. So do I write a point five on now? Uh, no, no, no <laughs> fractions of points. Gosh darn it. Well, everyone's gonna write one. I'm writing one. You <laughs> gave us a pin. Wait, wait. All right, fine. You all get a fraction of a point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the correct spelling here, uh, capital D, if, if mm, I wouldn't mm, have counted, mm. but D-A-E-N-E-R-Y-S, you got that correct. Um, I know. Last name T A R G A R Y E N. Uh, you were also fairly close. You switched around where the A E was uh, uh. and uh, put an A instead of E at the end for Targaryen. Unfortunately, yeah. no points for that one. It seems very simple, yeah. and I have to look it up every single time I, I like include it in a question or start like looking her up for something. And I was like, I should just make this a question because it keeps tripping me up. It's uh, hard because on the show, I feel like they always kind of mumble it because they're not sure themselves. Yeah. Like, ah, yes, the Targaryens. <laughs> Fire <laughs> and blood. Well, no points for that that one. Two, two, and four, which means that Alyssa has locked up the win for this. But what? Um, uh, double or nothing. Still ruined. I bet all my nothing. points. We're not gonna double. Or nothing. Gamble. Yeah, you two team up to add your <laughs> points together. Wait, yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> one Take person. my buzzer. <laughs> uh, as always, our last question concerns real life skills. So these are just things oh, yeah, about yeah. the real world that might be valuable oh, for yeah. you. 
There are many commonly confused Latin abbreviations used in English. IE should be used in place of for example, EG should be used in place of in other words, and all should be used when listing people to mean and others, and etc. should be used when listing things to mean and so forth or and the rest. Alyssa. Um, it should be EX for example. Uh, you did not say um actually. Ah. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, if it yeah, makes it you is. feel better, that also was not correct. Oh, uh, that makes me feel better. It's all Greek to me. <laughs> it's Latin, you idiot. <laughs> Yes. Uh, um, actually, in other words, should be I O W. Yow. Yow. Not even Latin, just like, eh. Yow. Yow. It's the lawyer. Yow. <laughs> My client. Uh, incorrect. Oh, damn. Call will you want to venture a guess, or you just got to throw in the towel here? Um, actually, E G is wrong. You should use another one. Um, that is is correct. Uh, 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 yeah, well, uh, do you know what we did here? What, any any guesses there? I think it's just not, that's just not one of them. You just made up EG. Uh, that is not the case, but okay. I'll give you the point anyway um, for, for identifying it. So we swapped around IE and EG. Uh, so EG should be used when you're giving examples, mm -hmm. and IE should be used when you're saying in other words. My oh. discipuli is gonna be very upset with me. <laughs> or no, 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 my magister is gonna be very upset with me. <laughs> Pulling out that high school Latin. I've been a bad discipuli. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it was enough to get you a point. Wasn't enough to get you the win, our final score score here, three, two, four, which makes Alyssa our winner for this episode of um, Actually. Um, that is it for this episode. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um, Actually. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for coming out Thank to you. play. Yay. Thank you. Thank you.